coming on time for those who came on time that shows promptness. I'm sure once we come closer to the matter, a lot of people are going to come in, but you get dibs on the first row, so that's a good thing. Um, the uh, a couple of quick questions. Do you, does does anyone not know who Dr. Ryan is? Okay, good. Ah, don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. All right, so, so uh, Dr. Ahmed, he is the director of the Wolf Studies AISJ. He is full time, which is alhamdulillah a great uh, benefit and blessing. Uh, he joined us a couple of years back. Um, there are a number of classrooms, uh, uh, curriculum based um, classes for uh, the middle school, high school, um, and even beyond. But well, he's in charge of the youth, so that is 13 all the way to 35. Even though I like to consider myself youth, but you know, that's a different story. Um, so he's in charge of the youth at ISCJ. Um, he also uh, is a frequent speaker in um, Mass ICNA, ICNA Mass. You know, so I think you may be going to ICNA Mass this season, shall we? So, uh, as well as other um, So we're blessed to have him. Um, he's, uh, he has a PhD in physics. Biology. Biology. I'm close, close. Um, and, um, and when it comes to the, uh, to, uh, the scholarly Islamic studies, he can definitely uh, speak for that. Inshallah. So can you give us a, a, a super quick bio on the... Uh... No? Okay. So that's Dr. Ackley. <laughs> so we'll, we'll tell you more about it. Um, so Inshallah, we're going to kick off. So, so this specific event um, is co-organized with LIT and ICNA, so that's where Dr. Ramiz is from, so I'm going to give him, uh, so I'm going to get uh, to his uh, quick bio, but this, today's topic is very, very important, and as you can see, I mean, I'm sure the room's going to fill, fill up very, very soon, but it is very important to both youth and parents, and that's why we did not specify a specific age, so we wanted both of you to be here, to hear this um, uh, workshop. And Brother Ramiz did this workshop uh, in many, many other places. So he's going to speak for that. I don't want to steal his thunder. Uh, but he did this many, many times. And he actually approached us, Jazawah, uh, here, in order for him uh, to, uh, to do it over here. And we uh, definitely jumped on that idea. We took him uh, upon uh, that. And uh, we came here. So, uh, without any further ado, so a quick bio of Brother Ramiz. So, he graduated um, 2008 with BS in. Information technology, so IT, that's uh, all the great people graduate from, so because it's my major. <laughs> he also graduated in 2017 uh, with a Bachelor's of Arts in Islamic Studies, so he worked in the IT field from 2008 until 2014. And in 2014, he became the Director of Comms and Outreach, or Communication and Outreach, for ICNA's uh, Council of, for Social Justice. Uh, he initially jo joined ICNA as a volunteer. Uh, then he became uh, uh, full-time, so he served as the youth coordinator for two years and then as the president of the ICNA Mosque in Alexandria, Virginia for two more years before joining ICNA Council for Social Justice in 2014. So this is what we're going to miss. Lucky again for coming. Uh, and without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to you. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you for coming. This is a very important topic, and I always make it interactive. I hate lecturing, so I don't do lectures in this whole workshop. I interact with the audience. So why did we start this session? Uh, because a lot of, after you know 9/11, um, there have been a lot of complaints about Muslim kids being you know picked on in school, whether it's the girl with the hijab being torn down, or it's a Muslim boy because he's brown is being called a terrorist. Or, or, or many other reasons as well, people get bullied for different reasons. Um, so some Muslims had approached us and they said, you know, ICNA CSJ should do something on bullying. And at the time, we didn't know anything about bullying. We never, like, you know, studied it or looked into it. So it was a new challenge for us. So we adopted it. We thought, you know, this is a good idea. It's something that our community needs. And there's not a lot, of, a lot of resources for it. So what we did, we got into researching it. We attended conferences. We read studies. We read uh, booklets, we, read, we, we met with professionals, we met with people who are doing their PhDs in uh, bullying of Muslim kids in public schools. Like how many people did you know who, who, spe who specifically are doing PhDs in religious-based bullying in school? Like, it's like unheard of, right? So we actually reached out to these people and we could basically tap into their research. And then based on all of that data, we created this workshop. 
So this workshop comes from their research. So this is, we're, just, we're, just, we're just the messenger who is giving the message of what they taught us. After having discussions with them, attending their conferences, uh, sitting down with them, inviting them to our uh, organization and giving webinars and classes on bullying, gathering all of that data and information we created this workshop. So that's what this workshop is about. So we hope, inshallah, once we go out through with this today, um, you'll have a better understanding of bullying. Now, I've basically um, put the workshop in two parts. The first part, I'm focusing on the kids, okay, and their response. So I'm going to be interacting with the kids, so I don't want any parents to interfere. And then the second part, I'm going to be talking to the parents. So I have the workshop in two parts, okay? So, let's, let's begin. Okay. Okay, so now somebody tell me from the kids, what is bullying? Give me a definition of bullying. What is bullying? Somebody tell me. No one knows bullying? Mashallah. I know all the names, so can I pick my name? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So like picking on like picking on someone as a an event. Okay, picking on someone uh, um, uh, because of an event, okay. Anything else? What is bullying? What is the definition of bullying? Okay. Okay, good, good. That's definitely one of the uh, parts of the definition. Anything else? Last chance. Girls? Yeah. Sisters? I, I see one or something. The definition of bullying. Okay, let's go. So bullying is basically uh, unwanted or aggressive behavior that includes three things. Meaning, it must include these three things. If these three things are not included, it is not considered bullying. Okay? Number one, hostile intent, not accident. What does that mean? I can't tell me. Yes. It was purposefully done. Yes, it was purposefully done. It wasn't a miscommunication. It wasn't a misunderstanding. The kid actually intended, or the bully actually wants to inflict psychological or physical harm on the victim. Okay, they actually want to hurt their feelings. They actually want to physically hurt them. They actually want to emotionally hurt them. That's their intention. Okay, so number one, there's intention. Okay, there's a hostile intent. It's not an accident. Okay, condition number two, imbalance of power. Somebody said that here. What does that mean, by the way? What is imbalance of power? There's an imbalance of power between the bully and the victim. Yes. Okay, okay. Anything else? So imbalance of power is basically any... So the, the bully has some sort of power over the victim. Okay? There's something about the bully that intimidates the victim. Okay? He could be physically stronger. Okay? But not necessarily. Maybe he's more popular. Why is popularity a form of power? So the kid, the kid might be weaker physically, but he's uh, popular socially. So why is that power? Yes. You, you want to raise your hand? Okay. Um, because if someone someone would have more people on their side, uh, like in the argument. Okay. Yeah. No. That, that's that's correct. So. Naturally, if you have more people behind your back, then you have more power, right? Because you have more influence, right? If, if that one weak kid who's really popular, he said, this kid, we're going to make fun of him, the whole school wants to make fun of him, right? That's power. That is power, right? And how many of you guys seen all those videos of like one kid like being jumped by 10 kids, okay? And that happens, right? It's very, it's very rare that you see one kid, right, uh, being bullied by one kid. It's usually like four or five kids picking on one kid, right? Because there's one kid in that group that's the leader, that's leading that effort, right? So he might be physically weaker, but he has the support. So social power is also a form of power. So somehow, the bully has some sort of power over the victim. Also, it could also be that the bully has access to some private information. That is also power, right? If I have some private, if I know something uh, about your personal life, okay? And I say, hey, if you don't do what I say, I'm going to tell everybody that your family is going through such and such problem. Or you know what? Uh, you know, you, uh, I have a such and such picture of you that you took somewhere accidentally. I have it in my power. I will send it to the whole school if you don't do X, Y, and Z. That's power, right? That so you have access to personal information about someone that they do not want exposed, okay? Because of shame or whatever it may be. But that's also a form of power, okay? So there's an imbalance of power. And the third condition is repetition. 
happens again and again and again and again. This is the officially accepted definition among experts of what bullying is. Anything that does not fit these three conditions is not bullying. It might be harassment, okay? It might be something else, but it's not considered bullying according to textbook definition. Okay, this is what most uh, academics basically uh, accept as a definition. Now, there are there are right now movements to make it more strict, okay, this definition, but in this classroom, for this sake, we're gonna basically go with what the majority of experts are saying right now. Okay, types of bullying. So somebody give me the types. Give me the types of bullying. What kind of, give me the different types. Yes. I'm sorry? Yes, good, cyberbullying. Anything else? Yes. It is type of bullying, yes, but give me the broader category. Anything else? Yes. Okay, good. That is definitely a type of bullying, but it's under a broader category. What's the broader category? Okay, let's go through it, inshallah. Verbal bullying. So give me your verb. Now you'll get it, inshallah. What is verbal bullying? Calling names. Calling people names. Yes, that's verbal bullying. Anything else? Making threats against someone, right? I'm gonna hurt you if you don't if you don't do such and if you don't do my homework, I will hurt you. Watch what happens after school. I'm gonna beat you up, okay? Uh, or maybe somebody calling somebody a terrorist, right? Because he's brown. That's all. That's all verbal bullying. So anything that happens with the tongue. So I have other examples here: teasing, name calling, inappropriate comments, taunting, threatening. All of these are verbal bullying. The next form is social. How do you socially bully someone? What is social bullying? Yeah. Yes. Yes, exactly. Making them look bad in public. Anything else? So a popular example of social bullying is this. You can come to my party, you can come to my party, you can come to my party, you can't, you can't come to my party. Okay? That's social bullying. But what is the intent? What's the intention? What's the intent? Based on the definition that we discussed, what's the intention of the bully in this case? Why is he particularly pointing him or her out? Make them feel bad, right? Make them feel bad, make them look bad. Yes, that's socially bullying someone. Spreading rumors, embarrassing someone in public, leaving someone out on purpose, those are all called social bullying. Last one is, uh, let's see this one, physical, physical. We should know, everybody should know physical, right? What is physical bullying? Other than you, you know too much. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. So basically when you get physical with some punching, kicking, spitting, stripping, shoving, whatever. But anything has to do with it. Whenever you put someone puts their hands on you, it becomes physical bullying. Well, when their intention is to harm you physically or emotionally or psychologically. The last one I have here is cyberbullying. What is cyberbullying? Yes. Yeah. So basically everything that we just discussed, other than physical, everything that we just discussed, but it happens in the digital world, okay? Uh, over social media, uh, over maybe text messages, over forums, okay? So all of the other avenues that are there, there's a, so anything that happens in the digital world is called cyberbullying. Next, next, I have some examples here. Social media, texting, forums, gaming. Uh, okay, also includes sharing personal or private information, sharing false, negative, harmful, or mean content. By the way, what, is, what do I mean by gaming? Go back one Yeah, what do you mean by gaming? How do you get, what does that mean? Maybe some of the guys know, maybe some of the video games, yes. Um, like, you can like, talk to other people on a game with their chats. Yeah, exactly. So what's happening is that a lot of times there are like, kids who are playing video games online, right? And they're, you know, uh, playing, and they're talking with other players around the world. And some of them are very aggressive. Some of them are like, you know, like adults basically bullying kids, calling them horrible and horrific names and threatening them with their families because they beat them in the video game or whatever. So that's basically, it is a form of bullying, but it's happening in the digital world. Okay, so what do you think I'm going to talk about on this slide based on the title? What do you think I'm going to talk about? What am I discussing in this slide? Yes. Okay, what are the most common things people pick on? Okay, that's good. Anything else? So, uh, what he said is right, basically. 
Um, so there are certain qualities, so research shows that there are certain qualities that a bully is looking for in their victims. Not everybody in school gets picked on, right? Not everybody in school gets a bully, gets bullied, right? There are certain kids. So what's making the bully pick out certain kids over other kids? So research shows there are certain qualities that attract a bully towards his victim, okay? And that's what we'll talk about in these slides. That now, this doesn't mean that it's, there, it's the victim's fault. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is, this is what, if you have these qualities, you are more likely to get bullied. Students who are perceived to be different from their peers. So anytime you are somehow different than everybody else around you, you are automatically a target, okay? So in the case of a girl who's wearing a hijab, for example, okay? Or a kid who's Muslim, right? A, a boy who's Muslim. Or it's a black kid in a predominantly white school, for example, right? They're automatically going to get uh, basically um, picked on, okay? Uh, other ones I have somebody who may be overweight, or someone who doesn't dress properly, someone who is new in school, who doesn't have any friends. Uh, so anyone who is different somehow than the regular crowd is more likely to get picked on, okay? And most likely to get bullied. Students belonging to an ethnic or religious minority, like I said earlier, okay? If it's a black kid maybe in a predominantly white school, or it's a Muslim kid in a predominantly Christian school maybe, okay? So, um, or, or a girl who wears a hijab and she's like, you know, basically standing out, right? So, um, that's just more likely to get bullied. Students perceived to be weak. Okay, this is a very particular quality because a lot of research shows this is one of the main things that victims have inside them. Low self-esteem and lack self-confidence. Why do you think this particular quality is so important to a bully? That attracts the bully to this type of kid who has low self-esteem. First tell me, what is low self-esteem? What is self-esteem? What does self-esteem mean? Okay, you don't believe in yourself. Basically, you don't have a good opinion about yourself. I'm too fat, I'm too ugly, I'm not good enough, I'm a failure. I'm, that's someone who has low self-esteem. Someone who doesn't have a good opinion about himself or herself. Okay? So that's called low self-esteem. So why is this particular quality so important to a bully? Why does he care? Yes? I'm sorry? Yes, exactly. Because the victim will not stand up for himself or herself. They will let the abuse continue. Okay, they will let the abuse continue, they will not uh, stand up. Last one I have is students who have few friends or who are unpopular. Obviously, if you don't have enough support, if you don't have social support, right, around you, then you will, are more likely to get bullied. And hence we see it, right? A kid who's getting bullied, or who's getting like beat up and, on the school bus, right, and nobody's helping him. Everybody's just sitting there and watching. Or he's getting beat up at school, he's getting picked on. Everybody's watching, right, and nobody's doing anything. By the way, I was going to mention this later, but I'll tell it now since it's related to this point. If you watch the, uh, you know the, 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 uh, the kids who shoot other kids, right, at school? A lot of them were bullied in school, right? And so some of them, when they asked them, like, okay, why did you shoot everybody, okay? Like, why didn't you just go after your bullies? Why are you shooting everybody at the school, okay? But one of the things that they say is that they're all guilty. Why? Because I was getting bullied and no one helped me. They all laughed with them, okay? They didn't help me, they didn't stand with them, they stand with the bully. They took, so they're all my enemies, okay? So that's why it's, so, it's very important to give victims support, social support and friends, and we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so, what do you think I'm going to talk about in this slide? What am I going to talk about, other than the title? Okay, anything else? Anyone want to word it in another way? So basically, why would one human being want to make someone else feel miserable? Because they're miserable of themselves. I'm sorry? They're miserable of themselves also. They probably have some background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inshallah. Yeah. That's one of the points that we'll get to. Yeah, so in this case, basically, this slide, basically, I'm discussing what is the reason why one human being wants to make another one feel miserable. Like when we think about it, like rational people, when we think about it, right? Like why would I want to make someone else feel terrible? And you know, why would I want to hurt their feelings, make them feel bad, or make them try to commit suicide, for example, right? Like why would I do that, right? So there's certain reasons why kids bully. So in this slide, we go into the psychology of a bully. How is a bully actually thinking? Okay, what is his thinking mentality? Yes. Number one, okay, so all kids, they require attention, okay? from their parents. 
And when they, when they don't get it right in the proper way, they try to get it in different ways. So what happens is, in certain situations, the only way the child has learned to get attention from his parents, okay, or her parents, is by lashing out, being loud, screaming, breaking things, okay? So when they go to school, they exhibit the same behavior because that is the only way they know how to get attention. That is the only way they know how to get attention is by lashing out. So one number one reason is because of the parents. They didn't give the child the proper attention that he or she needed. That's why for parents, it's very important to give the child the proper attention that they need. Unstable home environment. What does that mean? Some, broken home. I want to hear from the kids. Okay. Uh, we'll give you the parents that can swim in gel. So, unstable home environment. What does that mean? I want, to, I want a kid to tell me. Yes. Okay, good. The, maybe the family members are not very welcoming. Okay. Yeah, they're very common. They, maybe the parents are fighting all the time in the house and they're getting a divorce or they're separated and the kid is just stressing out. Okay, he's just stressing out and he's taking it out on other kids at school. Anything else? Or maybe the kid is in a very poor household and he's working like double shifts right after school and he's like completely stressed out. Okay, and he's lashing out on other kids because of the, because of the stress. Okay, sometimes it's because they're, they're victims of bullying themselves. Okay, so somebody else is bullying them at the school. Okay, somebody else is bullying them. Or sometimes the bully is in the house. The bully is in the house. Sometimes it's their older brother or sister who is bullying them. Okay? So when they go to school, they do the same thing to other kids, what their older siblings do to them. And sometimes, and I, actually I heard this from a counselor, she said that a lot of cases of bullies that she gets, and when she asks them, why do you bully other kids? When she goes deeper into them, she finds out the parents actually bully the kid. The parents are bullying the child to such an extent that he becomes a bully when he goes to school. Okay? So, it's, it's, so sometimes the bully is the parent. <clears throat> bad role models. Okay? So sort of copying bad behavior. Maybe, <clears throat> maybe the older sibling or the parent is not picking on them. Okay? Maybe, but, uh, but they're picking on other kids or other people. So the child sees his father being a bully to other people in the community, okay? Or he, she, he sees his mother being bullying other women in, in, uh, in the masjid, for example, right? Or in, in the community. So he or she goes to the school, they do the same behavior, why? Because they look up to their parents, okay? Or maybe it's the older brother and sister who is basically bullying other kids, and the kid, you know, you know as, uh, naturally, younger siblings look up to older siblings, right? After a while that changes, but when they're younger, you know, they really look up to their older, older brothers and sisters. So when they see their older brothers and sisters, who in their eyes is like a hero, right? Or, or a hero, right? And then when they go to school, uh, when, they, when, when they see them bullying other kids, so they want to be like them, so when they go to school, they do the same thing, okay? Because they're copying bad behavior, bad role models. Okay, some kids are just mean by nature, okay? They're just, they're just really mean, okay? And they need like counseling and therapy to help them calm down. To fit in or to be accepted. So sometimes what happens is the, the kid is around other kids that bully other kids, okay? And, in order, and the only way for him to be accepted in that group is to become a bully. If he's not, if he's not going to bully other kids, then he cannot be part of that group. And because he doesn't want to be rejected by that group, he becomes a bully as well, okay? I remember there was a case, actually, uh, a couple of years ago, about a lady on a school bus. Do you remember this case? I don't know how many of you remember. But there was a woman on a school bus uh, in middle school. It was like, it was, a, it, was a, it was an older woman. She was on a school bus, and there were some middle school boys, like, saying horrible and horrific things for her, against her, like threatening her, calling her really hideous names, to the point that made her cry. She says, it's not a child, it's an older woman. They're really bullying her. And they recorded this whole thing, and I think this thing went viral, right? And after that, you know, the kids themselves started getting death threats from all over the world country, right? But anyway, when they separated the kids and they asked them, why were you doing it? Why were you even filming it? Okay, like the cast the kid who was filming it, why did you film it? He said, oh, they made me do it. But other, my friends, they made me do it. They told me to do it. They were pressuring me to do it. I didn't want to do it. I felt bad, but they were forcing me to do it. So, the point I'm trying to make is, sometimes they're in the wrong crowd. The crowd that they're in will not accept them unless they become a bully. Okay? And this is where the parents come in. You need to know who your kids are hanging out with. If they're not hanging out with the right crowd, you need to separate them. Okay? And um, so that's something as well. 
Okay, sometimes it's jealousy. Okay, she's why is she so pretty than me? Okay, why is he better in basketball than me? Why does he get better grades than me? Sometimes it's just it's just seriously just jealousy. Somebody's just jealous of someone else, and because of that, uh, they bully other kids. Okay, sometimes kids are so some kids are so insecure. Okay, they are so afraid. Okay, and that somebody else will bully them that they start bullying other kids. So they don't want to. They don't want to because they're so scared that somebody else will bully them. They want to bully other kids first. I, I met actually a gentleman at an anti-bullying conference that was there, and he was telling us that in middle, in elementary school, in elementary school, he was bullied so severely that when he went to middle school, he became the biggest bully in the school. Okay, why is that? Because I was. He had such a horrific, uh, you know, uh, experience in elementary school. He became so scared. Okay. And he became so worried that somebody else would bully him, so he went to high, he went to middle school and started bullying all other kids on the playground. He became the biggest bully, he said, in middle school. Why? Because of insecurity. Okay? Because he felt insecure. The view of violence positive. This is an interesting one. What do you think that means? Somebody tell me. Yes. Other than the next one, wait, other than you. <laughs> no, this is good, I like that you were engaged. I want somebody else who hasn't spoken yet. Maria. Kids. Maria. What does it mean? View violence positively. Okay, so viewing violence positively means like they think it's going to help them. Um, it's going to like benefit themselves. Okay, okay. Anything else? Yes. They see it as an enjoyment. Okay, they see it as an enjoyment. Now you can go. Yeah. Um, they think like it's okay, it's going to like help. They think it's like allowed. They view it as like, a, good, a good thing. Okay, okay. We're all close, we're very close. So, do we know about, you know, you know that debate about uh, violent video games and violent uh, movies, right, and kids, right? There's a huge debate in the psychology community, like, is this real, is this an actual thing or not, is this imagination? Here's what we know, okay, here's what we know, that when it comes to children, their brains, and I have a biologist here, right? <laughs> their brains are not fully really developed, okay? They cannot really tell the difference between reality and fiction. Okay? They cannot tell. So when you and I, the adults, when we see a bloody scene in a movie, okay? Or when we see like um, uh, a violent video game, we know this is fake. It's not real, okay? It's all fake, right? But to a child's mind, okay? To the mind of a child, he cannot tell the difference, okay? To him, it's the same thing. So that's why they try to imitate that behavior. So when they are exposed to violent behavior as a child, okay? In a positive light, as a form of entertainment, okay? As an end form of entertainment, they go to school, they try to basically imitate that entertainment. Okay? Why? Because in their mind, it's the same thing. In their mind, it's the same thing. Okay? I remember when I was a kid in middle school, uh, like, you know, we had like a lot of kids, in our, a lot of boys in our school, they were like huge fans of WCW and WWF. When they would come to school, they would do the exact same moves in like bathroom stalls and the hallways. And sometimes some kids would get really hurt, okay? Why? Because in their mind, they cannot fathom that this is fake. It's all an act, you know, that's not real. They cannot do that. So that's what we know. So yes, so there is a really strong correlation between exposing young kids to violent video games and violent, uh, you know, movies and their behavior as a bully, okay? So there's a connection, okay? Okay, some kids have difficulty following rules, okay? So, if you look at these things, do you think punishing this kid is going to help? Think about this. Look at this list. You know, some, some schools have, we have a zero tolerance policy against bullying, okay? Like, that's gonna help. <laughs> but, if, but do you think punishing this child is going to help? If you put, if you expel this kid, is that going to change his behavior? Yes or no? No. Yes. No. It won't. It will not. And that's what the research shows. It will not. What do you think he needs or she needs? Huh? Yes. They need psychological help. They need emotional help. They need a therapist. They need a psychologist. They need a. They need a counselor to sit down with them and work through their issues. Whether psychological, emotional, whatever issues that they have in their life, they need to work them out. They need to untangle whatever stress that they're having that's causing them to behave this way. Okay? That's what they need. And that's what the research shows. And that's why schools must invest in um, psychologists, counselors, and therapists to sit down with these bullies and make, them, make sure that their issues are resolved. And that's what we need. 
And that's how we will get rid of it. Okay, <clears throat> effects of building. What do you think I'm going to talk about in this slide? What am I going to talk about in this slide? I want kids to tell me. By the way, before I continue, why do you think the previous slide was important for me to discuss with the kids? Who would you guys? Why is that slide so important? Why kids bully? You know why, uh, why I included that slide? Because I want you to humanize the bully. I want you to understand that. Because a lot of kids, when they're being bullied, they think of the bully as some sort of like a super villain, right? Who's like unstoppable. You know, it's like, like bullets can't touch him. He's like, he's like, you know, it's like nothing can harm him. Now you have to understand they're coming from, they're, they are a human being. They have certain, there's a certain psychology behind why they're behaving the way that they are, okay? So I want you to humanize the bully. I want you to understand that he has a human aspect that is making him or her behave that way. That's why we have that slide in there, to discuss the mentality of a bully. So you can humanize him and still, hey, he is a human. He can be, you know, uh, he, has, he has human needs like everyone else, just like me. So that's why I want you to, that, I want you to build that connection in your mind when you think of a bully. Okay, so what are we going to talk about in this one? Effects of being bullied. What am I going to talk about? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, how is it going to affect in the long run? So, this is so basically there's this understanding that there nothing happens. Like a lot of parents that come across, they have this understanding as well that they think that bullying is just something. It's just part of childhood. Okay, it's something that you just grow up with. It's just part of life. It's not supposed to be. It's not. It's not normal to be bullied. Okay, most kids are not bullied actually. Okay, many kids are, but most are not. And bullying is a form of trauma. That's what I want to take that with you today. It is a form of psychological, emotional trauma on a child, okay? That has long-lasting impacts, even into adulthood, okay? There are people I know that I've met, okay, who are on medication, okay? Or who are on um, antidepressants till this day because they were bullied as kids, because they've never been able to, because of the emotional trauma that was resulted as a form, and because of the bullying, they're still on antidepressants. It's a very serious issue. This is not playful teasing. A lot of people think bullying is just playful teasing. It's not playful teasing. Look, remember the definition that we discussed? There's an intent to harm the child. Okay, there's actually an intent to harm the victim. So it's not something that should be taken lightly. So, research shows that bullying can have physical, psychological, social, and educational harms, okay? Including kids who are bullied are more likely to be depressed. They are more likely to have anxiety. They are more likely to feel sad, they're more likely to feel alone. There is changing in eating and sleeping patterns. So a kid is eating, you know, normally, and all of a sudden, their patterns change. They're sleeping, they're, not, they're, they're like waking up at nightmares, and they're not, they're, their whole eating schedule is changed. You take them to a doctor, and the doctor says, I don't know what's happening. The kid is okay. I see nothing wrong with the x-rays, with the tests that we did. What's wrong? I don't want to talk about it. Why? I don't know. But nothing's wrong with me. I'm okay. You know, maybe something's happening at school. Decreased academic performance. If your child is a great, you know, A student, straight A student, or A B student, all of a sudden they're dropping their grades. A, now they're having D's and F's. What's going on? I don't know. What's going on in school? What happened? I don't want to talk about it. Why? I just know nothing's happening. Just leave me alone. Maybe something's happening in school. Okay? So that's something that parents need to watch out for. Lost interest in activity that they used to enjoy. Your kid comes home, I want to join job, I want to play soccer, I want to play soccer. Okay, you put them in the soccer team. Two weeks later, I hate soccer, I never want to go again. Why? What happens? I don't want to talk about it. Nothing happened, I just don't like it, I hate it now. Two weeks ago, you were going crazy about it. Well, maybe something happened on the field, right? You draw that connection, right? Small kid. <clears throat> so there's a very small percentage, very small percentage of victims of bullying. They go home, they get a gun, they come to school, they start shooting everyone, okay? Now, I, I, I gave the example earlier, right? Most kids who are bullied don't do that, okay? They just take the, they just take the uh, abuse, okay? They digest it. But some very small minority of kids, they will take advantage and they'll start shooting everyone, okay? Next. Okay, now we get to the crux of the matter. What to do if you're actually bullied? So tell me, some, let's give, give some hands up. What should you do if you're being bullied? Somebody bullied you, what should you do? Yes. Okay, I mean, what does that mean, fight back? Okay. Yes. Ask for help. Ask for help. Okay. Anything else from the sister side? Okay. Tell someone because maybe they have like the power to 
Okay, good, good. Okay, so we'll get to some of these in shallow. Okay, number one thing we need to realize. No, the number one thing we need to understand that what the bully is looking for is a reaction. Okay? What the bully is looking for is some sort of a reaction from you. They want to see fear in you. Okay? They want to see you tremble. They want to see you stutter. They want to see you sweat. Okay? They want to see you shake. Okay? They want to see that stutter in your voice when, you, when, you, when they pick on you. Why? Because it's entertaining. That's what they want. They want to see some sort of a reaction. And if you don't give them that reaction, they'll get bored and they'll move on to someone else because you're not what they're looking for. So number one rule to remember is do not give them any reaction. Like let it roll off you like it didn't even bother you. You're so fat. Oh yeah, I know, I tried, whatever. You know? Just like it did nothing. It didn't even bother you. You know, if like, somebody calls you Osama, you know, like you know, or somebody says, you know, are you gonna blow up a plane? No, not today. I don't have any plane today. You know, like it's not even bothering you, right? You don't care, right? And um, I remember one time um, I was uh, um, I was speeding a little bit, so I got pulled over by a cop, and he came over, and then he said, uh, he looked at me, he, I guess he figured out it was brown or something, he's like, do you have any bombs in the car? He was just, you know, just trying to, you know, intimidate me, I'm like, not that I know of, and I, I, I didn't even let it touch me, he started laughing so hard, and he said, let's just go get out of here, okay? So, I mean, the point is, don't let it bother you, okay? If you let it, basically, that's because that's what the bully wants. He wants you to inhale that information and let it, he wants it to sting you, okay? So if you don't give them any reaction, like it doesn't even bother you, okay? He's going to say, okay, you know what, this kid, he's not interesting. I need to go find someone else, okay? That's rule number one. Rule number two. Tell the bully to stop in a calm and clear voice. Why? Why is that important? Both of these are important. Why? Tell the bully to stop in a calm and clear voice. Yes. Um, like, I think, I'm not sure, I think, like, for calm, it shows that you're, like, not scared, you can tell them to stop while you're, while you're calm. Right, right, exactly, exactly. So, you go to number, rule number one, or don't show a reaction, that doesn't work, and you tell them to stop in a calm and clear voice. Why? Because, okay. number one, calm, why? Because, the rule number one, you don't want to show them a reaction. Tell them to stop. Why? In a clear voice. Why? Because what happens is, oftentimes, something happens, like maybe this situation, and you both get to call to the uh, principal's office. The principal tells the bully, uh, why did you pick him? Why did you hit him? Okay? Why did you call him his name? The first thing he's going to say, or she's going to say, is, I was just joking. I was playing around. I wasn't serious. He didn't tell me to stop. If it bothered him so much, why didn't he tell me to stop? And the first thing the principal is going to turn to the kid is going to say, did you tell him to stop? No. Why? I don't know. Well, why did you, so that's why you have to protect yourself. Why do you have to be sure that there is no miscommunication, okay? Maybe because if he is playing around, if he is not serious, he doesn't want to hurt you or she doesn't want to hurt you, they will stop because, oh, you know, he's he or she's been bothered. I don't want to, you know, go further, okay? So, um, so, if the, so if you have told the kids to stop, now you both get called to the principal's office, the principal will say, well, the kid will say, yes, I did tell him to stop. But he continued to do that behavior with me, and I have witnesses around me who saw me tell him to stop. And I can give you their name, you can, you can interview them, okay? So that's, that's something you need to, we need to understand. Okay, so now, obviously, if you feel that the bully is too threatening, okay? Okay, he's too, or he's too aggressive, and in some cases that has happened, then there's, uh, then you obviously do not, do so basically if you are afraid that if I do this, he might get physical with me or start harming me, then there's some other things we can do. We'll talk about that in a second, Sean. Okay, <clears throat> you can also try to laugh it off. Okay, so, you know when I first read this in the research books, I thought they were joking. I thought it was a misprint, <laughs> but actually it's actually a real thing. Why do you think this works? You laugh it off, you joke it off, and, and uh, you know, why do you think that works in some situations? It may work. It may work. Something you can try. So this is a trial and error, by the way. By the way, this is all this stuff is based on a different bully, okay? So, it may, some things may work with one bully. These are all basically steps and tactics that you can use to defend yourself. Yes? Uh, it also shows that like, you're, you're not getting a reaction and like, you're not like, scared of the kid. And the kids would like, expect you to just like, Laugh off. Exactly, because that's not a reaction that the bully is looking for. He's not, he's not asking, he's not, he, he doesn't want you to take it as a joke and just laugh it off. Like, again, you're letting it roll off you, okay? And you know, a lot of comedians, right, like John Stewart, for example, and a few other ones I can't recall, um, you, they were very, very harshly um, bullied as kids, and comedy was a way for them to escape bullying, okay? 
So a lot of comedians actually, when they were kids, they were actually being bullied. I think Chris Rock is one of them as well. They were all being bullied when they were kids. So comedy was a way for them to escape bullying. Okay. So that's something. So we need to understand as well. Okay. Um, Okay, so if speaking up seems too hard, not safe, walk away. So obviously, you don't don't fight back. Fight, okay, yeah. So we have to walk away. Okay, and we have to find an adult. So if the bully is too aggressive, okay, and this step you think will not work, you need to get yourself out of there immediately. Okay, don't stop, don't wait, just run out of there. Okay, and get an adult, especially if he's following you. Okay, okay, and um, what is the first rule? Actually, before we get to that, what is the first rule of self defense? Anyone know? What is the first rule of self defense? Practical self defense, by the way. Yeah. Like self defense, like, like fighting, or what are you? Doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Self defense, like in a physical situation. Oh, um, I was always told to like keep your guard up. Okay. Okay. Good. Guard up. That's 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 good. Don't engage. Step back. Don't engage. What? Step back. Don't engage. Don't engage. Yeah. This is closer. Yes. Yeah. The number one rule of uh, of um. Self defense is don't get yourself into a physical situation in the first place. Don't do things to get you in that situation in the first place. Number one rule is, by the way, I talked to like a black belt guy, right? He completely agreed with me. He said the first thing is you have to try to escape, okay? In practical self defense, I'm not talking about like karate, you know, with like a very significant dance you can't really use in real life. Okay? I'm talking about actual practical self defense classes like that you go to. They teach you things like, they don't teach you like stand in this form and do this and hold this and do this block. They tell you to run. Scratch, scream, pull hair, poke his eye out, that's practical self-defense. That is self-defense. Number one, if you're able to get up, run out, run. Scream fire, all of these forms are self-defense. This is basic self-defense, okay? And the problem is, in our culture, and a lot of victims of bullying feel this way, by the way, a lot of, a lot of kids, they feel that they have been taught, okay, that if you go to an adult, you're some, somehow like a wimp, okay? Or you're like, you're not, you're somehow weak, okay? So they don't go and they keep it to themselves, okay? And that's not healthy, okay? Your basic instinct tells you, okay? That if you are in danger, you need to get, you need, if you are in danger, you need to get yourself out from that situation, okay? And it is not an act of cowardliness, it is an act of self defense, okay? You are defending yourself. By the way, <coughs> Who saw that video of that Muslim girl who got beat up, a Syrian girl who was beat up in the, in the bathroom stall? You saw the video, right? That went viral. Who saw it? Raise your hand. Who saw that video? Based on what we just learned, what did she do wrong? What did she do wrong? She Huh? She didn't leave. She didn't leave. She engaged with her. Why is she engaging with her? Obviously, she is much stronger than her. Okay, right? We saw that with the first push, right? She flew back, right? Right? She, why is she engaging with her? Okay? As soon as she saw her out, she should have ran out. Okay, she should have ran out. And remember when she screamed, the girl got scared. She thought somebody might come in, right? She, she hesitated for a second, right? Because she's engaged. So the practical thing for her, in, in practical self-defense, they would have taught her that as soon as she came out and she saw them waiting for her, she should have ran out. Don't wash your hands, doesn't matter. You gotta leave your books there, bag, doesn't matter. You gotta run out. You gotta run out and get help. That this girl is following me, she's trying to harm me, she's trying to bully me. That's what she did wrong, okay? Because she tried to engage with the bully. You never engage with a bully, ever, okay? Especially when they're physically stronger than you, okay? Or they have backup. Okay, bullying continues. Okay, if all of these steps have happened, and it still continues. Talk to a trusted adult. What does that mean? What's a trusted adult? Yes. Okay, something deeper, yes. Okay, counselor, okay. Okay. Exactly, that's what I'm looking for. Somebody who will take you seriously. And by the way, parents, in most situations, your kids do not think you are that person, okay? Whenever I'm alone with kids, when I'm in a bullying workshop alone, I always ask them, uh, how many of you guys would actually tell your parents if you're being bullied? Most of them say, no, they will not tell them, okay? Why? Two reasons. Number one, like the parents will not do anything, they'll tell me to ignore it, okay? That's one reason, number one, because my parents will not do anything. Number two, my parents will make such a big deal, they'll come to my school and do a service, and they'll even embarrass me more, okay? So there has to be a rational response, okay, that your kids are looking for, okay? You can't overreact, and you cannot underreact, okay? And we'll, when I get to the parents section, I'll talk about what parents should do, but in most situations, unfortunately, most kids do not feel that the parent is that adult that they can trust, and that's very sad, that your kids, your own kids cannot tell you if they're a bully. Why? Because they don't trust you, that you will help them. 
Okay, so yeah. So I have some examples here. Teacher, parent, guidance counselor, meaning find someone that you can trust. By the way, I, I, I gave this workshop in Virginia once and um, there was a kid there, he was telling me his story when he was a kid and in high school was being bullied. He said the only person that helped him in the school was a janitor. No, no, I'm sorry, not janitor. The, the school security guard. He was the only one that helped the kid. The, no one else took him seriously. Not even his parents. This was only the, the security guard at the school that took him seriously. Okay, <clears throat> avoid the bully. What does that mean? Two things. <laughs> Stay away from places where bullying happens. Yes. So sometimes bullies, basically they hang around in certain areas of the school. That's their spot. Okay? Avoid those spots. Again, basic self-defense 101, right? Avoid the spot. Okay? You know these kids hang, these troublemakers hang around in certain areas of the school, right? Okay, don't go there. Why are you going there? A lot of us, actually, I'm from the DC area, so most of us know we should not go to Southeast DC, okay? So we don't go there because we don't want to get shot at, right? But we, we avoid it, right? That's the best of our ability. Uh, I know, like, uh, a lot of taxi drivers, Muslim taxi drivers, that will not pick up, you know, uh, that will not pick up um, people in Southeast DC. They won't even take a ride, like, like to get a Uber request, they won't do it. Because why? Because they have, there's so many stories that happen. People go in, they never come back out, right? Or the cars get stolen, they get that car jacked or something like that. Very dangerous area. Avoid the area, okay? Stay near adults and other kids, it happens alone, okay? Um, so obviously, sometimes what happens is, uh, certain bullies, they only pick up kids when the kid is alone, okay? Or when he's, uh, um, oh yeah, exactly, when, when he's alone, basically, okay? In that case, basically, then find an adult and walk with him, okay? If you feel that way. So again, we're going back to self-defense 101. This is self-defense 101, you're just protecting yourself, okay? So we have to become, um, you know, uh, knowledgeable, and we need to realize what self-defense is, what practical self-defense is, okay? And stick to it. Next. Okay, what not to do? So these are the things that are like, no, absolutely not. You should not do these things when you are a bully. What are those things? Number one, think it's your fault. It's not your fault. A lot of kids who are, a lot of kids who suffer from bullying, okay, a lot of them end up thinking uh, that it's their fault, that they deserve it. And uh, by the way, the parents have something to do with that. What would that man how and I'll get to that when I talk about the parents, inshallah. But it's not your fault. You do not deserve to be bullied. That's number one thing you need to understand, okay? Number two, fight back or bully a person back. Just because somebody else is bullying you doesn't mean that you should bully them as well. Okay. By the way, when it comes to this one, a lot of sometimes uh, a lot of parents ask me that, uh, well, if my if my kid, if some kid is hitting my kid, you shouldn't hit him back. What, what are you saying? Well, I'm saying that hitting back for most kids is not an option. So why would we even put that on the table? For most kids who are physically bullied, fighting back is not even an option. It's not even on the table. So why would we say fight back? Fighting back would only make it worse, okay? Because usually the, usually the kid is either physically stronger already, or if he's not, he has backup, okay? He has 10 guys who are going to jump him if he starts, tries to fight back, right? So they don't have an option, so that's something we need to understand. Because a lot of times I hear this, you know, like, even some commentators, like in news media, oh, when I was a kid, you know, there was a kid bothering me, I had to hit him in the face one time and it stopped. Okay, that may, be, that may have worked for you, but that's not the standard, okay? That's not how it usually works. That was like an exception. Those are exceptions, those are not the rule. And generally speaking, if they fight back, it's going to get worse, okay? Keep it to yourself and this whole bully will go away. Okay, bully will never go away. Stop thinking that bully will go away. It will never ever go away unless you put a stop to it. Unless you decide to put a stop to it, it will not go away. And that's why you have to get a trusted adult involved who will stop the bullying. But that is the only way it's going to stop. Um, skip school. So now, in some kids, it affects them so or impacts them so strongly that they start actually skipping school. They start avoiding school activities. Okay? Why? Because they're avoid because they're because they're afraid of the bully. The bully should never have this much power over your life, or it's influencing your behavior at school. Okay? Don't afraid to tell. Tell is not tattling. Okay? What's the difference between telling and tattling? Because a lot of bullies will say you're, you're going to be tattletale. What's tattling and telling? What's the difference? Between telling and tattling. Yes? I'm pretty sure tattling is if you're doing it for no apparent reason. That's not like really important. It's not like you're doing it for no reason. Like they're not actually doing anything to you. But like tattling is because they are doing something. Right, right. Yeah, so basically tattling is when you're trying to get someone in trouble. Your only objective is to get somebody in trouble. 
okay? Whether justified or not, you just want to get them in trouble. Telling is actually relating information, okay? So when you are telling an adult, you are not tattling, okay? You are relating information. And when the bully tells you you're going to be a tattletaler, it's because to defend themselves and protect themselves, okay? Because they want to continue the abuse. And if you tell someone and get somebody involved and put a stop to it, then his fun is over, or her fun is over, okay? So that's why they tell you not to tell anyone. Hurt yourself, okay? It's never okay to hurt yourself, okay? Because they're having a scenario where kids actually start cutting themselves. Well, what time is the one? You said eight, right? Five percent. Huh? Don't worry, you got five minutes. Twenty-five minutes. Twenty-five minutes. No, no. Five minutes. Okay. Right. okay. <clears throat> Um, so it's never okay to hurt yourself. By the way, there was a, in Maryland, there was a Muslim girl, 12 years old. She, she killed herself because she was being bullied. 12, what is that? An age? Nothing. She's only 12 years old. She killed herself. Why? Because she was being bullied at school. Okay? And she didn't get the proper help that she needed and she wanted. Okay? So it's very something very serious. Okay, if you see someone being bullied. Okay, so this is a, another one. Number one. Talk to a parent, teacher, or another adult. You should never allow someone else to get bullied, okay? If you see someone, uh, you, should have, you have to get involved, okay? You have to try to get them help, okay? Just like if you were being bullied, you would want someone to help you and not everyone to stand there and laugh at, you, uh, laugh at you, right? You want to do the same thing. How can you do that? Go and tell an adult immediately. Trusted adult that you know will do something. Yeah? Tell them, hey, I saw so-and-so uh, picking or bullying so-and-so at such and such location, and he, the kid looked very uncomfortable, I want to remain anonymous. You can do that. You can say, I want to remain anonymous. I just saw him happening. I saw these kids watching them as well. And I think you should do it if you look at it. It's looks serious. You have to report it to an adult. Be kind to the kid being bullied. Why is that important? Support. Yes. So that the victim feels like they have some support? Exactly. Support. Remember what I talked to you about the kids who come to school start shooting everybody because they didn't have support, the other kids didn't stand up for them, right? Because they want to put in the mentality of the victim that not everybody thinks like that kid, okay? You have friends, not everybody's like him. He's, a, he's the oddball, not you. Okay, everyone else is okay, or around you has your support. So when the bully was basically, uh, remember I said victim of the bullies have bullies, uh, victims of bullies have like low self-esteem, they have low self-confidence, right? So when the bully was bullying them and basically decreasing their self-confidence and self-esteem, now you are friending them and rebuilding their self-confidence, okay, and their, their self-esteem. Okay, that's why this is so important. I have some examples here. Sit with them at lunch or on the bus, talk to them, invite them to do something, make them not feel alone. It's very important. Make them not feel alone. Get involved, okay. So research has shown that when kids themselves get involved in some sort of an anti-bullying campaign at your school, it is far more effective than when adults tell them they don't bully. Why is that so? so? I want a kid to tell me. Why is it more effective when kids themselves in their school say, we will not have bullying in our school? Why is it more effective than when adults do it? Yes? I'm sorry? Exactly, because the bully doesn't have an audience. He knows people are not going to stand up. If I, kid, if I pick on this bully, the whole classroom is going to turn against me. Okay? Now, he, now he's on the defense, right? He doesn't want to take that risk, so he's going to stop. So that's why it's very important to get your... If you, if you are, try to get on the school, the school safety committee. Tell your school that we want to do an anti-bullying campaign at the school. We want to have phone numbers, we want to have help available. We want, we want, like, you want to support the victim. You do not want to support, you know, you want to create a culture at your school where bullying is unacceptable. And, and the bully should know that if I can pick on any kid at this school, other kids are going to turn me in, or they're going to turn against me. And that's not okay. Okay, so you have to have that. So inshallah, after the salah, we'll do the parents section, inshallah. Okay? Any questions, by the way, before we leave? So either I was really clear or I was really confusing. <laughs> yes? Stronger and you know your child would be weaker. So how does the child um, you know be kind? What, what what are the ways to be kind? If, if the to the bully or the, to the victim? No, he's talking about being kind to the victim, not to the, the bully. Victim. Yeah, to the victim. Yeah, but be kind to the victim, not the bully. Okay. Be kind to the victim. Okay. okay. Yes. So what I wanted to ask you, like, it's just, it's just where where is most of the bullying happening? Is it like elementary? Or like just 
middle school. school. Middle school happens the most. Yeah, middle, uh, then high school, and then elementary. Elementary is the, is the least. Yeah. Middle school is the most. Middle school is the most. Yeah. Even within that, like, is there? I'm just trying to, you know, like, my kids are going to get into middle school in two years. I want to see when to be kind of on the uh, there's no particular age, like which age, but it's just generally in the middle school arena. Uh, that's where it happens the most. Because the kids are so immature at that age, they're growing up, becoming adults, they're going through that phase. So it's, it's that right age. But the bullying happens at workplace, and bullying is also happening in marriages. So yes, it's yes. not just based in only in school, that mentality goes beyond that. Yes, yes. The bullying happens in all places. Uh, but obviously for our workshop here, we're focusing on kids, but yes, it happens in other places as well. But it's, 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 it's these same bullies that grow up and bully people at work, okay? So if they're at work, if you have a work, if you have a bully at work, most likely he or she was a bully in school as well. So the, the characteristics are there from the beginning. It happened to me, not necessarily with the kids. Adults bully adults. Yeah. I was at 3 4 months ago, I'm coming out of the store, I'm going to work. So I heard somebody say, yo, I turn around, this guy's like homeless. He said, use a cuss word, he said, get out of my country. I said, good, have a nice day. So there's another gentleman behind me, he's a nice guy, white guy, he said, how come you didn't get mad? I said, sir, I got news for you. Weak people take revenge, the strong people forget, and intelligent people ignore. He said, very good. Oh, that's good. Okay. So he didn't engage. So he, didn't, he didn't let him bother it, right? So he just let it off, roll off of him, which is good. Which is what we should do in most cases. Also, I want to share one thing. I have kids. I'm proud of them. Kids do what the parents do. So parents have to be role model. Exactly, yes. When I see kids not doing good, most cases, I blame parents. It's not easy. They're not doing You go through a lot. And the results are there. Yeah. I'm proud of my kids. I learned from my kids. That's what I said. Yeah. That I want to share with you guys. Yeah. No, inshallah, when I talk to the parents section, uh, and, uh, then I go into these stuff more, a lot more detail in the stuff we're talking about. About what parents should do, what to look for, and um, uh, and how to raise self-confident kids, inshallah, as well. Okay, so we'll take uh, some break for salah, then we'll begin right after the swimming, inshallah. Okay. Okay, so Alhamdulillah, wa salam, 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 wa So, for the student section, the parents stayed quiet, right? The whole time? So now it's your turn to return the favor, okay? So now when I talk to the parents, I need the kids to stay, stay quiet, okay? So they were quiet during your session, now it's time for you to stay quiet during your session, during their session. Now, if you get bored, uh, some kids get bored with this, the parent section, you're welcome to walk out, inshallah, that's fine. But I need to have a conversation with the parents, inshallah. And the parents' portion is smaller, uh, but just as important, inshallah. Okay, so let's begin, let's spin up. Okay, let's do some statistics on bullying. Okay, so this is what we know, okay? So there was a study done by CARE in California, this is what they found. 53% of Muslim students have experienced religiously based bullying in schools in California, which is twice the national average. A verbal bullying was reported by 52% of Muslim adolescents and was the most common form of harassment. From 2014 to 2017, uh, the rate of Muslim kids being bullied uh, due to physical harassment jumped from 9 to 19%. 38 percent of bullying, this is by the way to me is the most shocking, 38 percent of the bullying incidents involved a teacher or a school official, meaning the bullying was either the teacher or some other uh, some other worker at the school, okay, that was picking on the Muslim kid, okay, so it wasn't the other kid, it was the task, the teacher or the maybe some other school official. 32 percent of youth in California service said reporting a bullying made a difference. So only 32% said when they reported it to an adult, it actually made a difference. What does that mean? Based on what we discussed earlier, parents, what do you think that means? Because the parents didn't say anything. Yeah, so meaning these kids that whoever they reported to didn't do anything about it. Okay, they did not do anything about it. Okay, next. Uh, more than half, 57%, also report viewing their peers making offensive online posts about Islam and Muslims. So this is what we have. These are the statistics about Muslims being bullied in schools that we have. And as you can see, 
it's uh, quite disturbing. By the way, this is only for California. So imagine if we did a national average, okay? So this is just in the state of California. Now, so, what to do if your child is bullying, being bullied, okay? So before I get to it, before I get to it, let's ask the parents, what, do you, what should you do if your child is being bullied? Let me see how you know. And don't repeat what I said earlier. <laughs> yes? I think it starts before the child gets bullied. To create a, a relationship between the child of trust so okay. they can come to the first person. Good, good. Anything else? What else? What should a parent do if your child is being bullied? Let them know that you can, they can tell you and that what steps you would take in order to help them. Okay, okay. That would yes. What you should do is to them and express something that Okay, empathize with the kids, yes. You shouldn't go overboard, you should, throw a, you should not throw a circus at their school, okay? Or you embarrass them, okay? But yes, you should empathize with the child. Anything else? Yes. Okay, so ask the advice of the kid, okay? You should also report it to the school. Report it to the school, okay. Which is the key thing here? Which is to report to the school, yes. Okay, good, good. So this is what it is. Number one, parents. Do not tell them to ignore it or suck it up. Remember I told you this is what kids complain about, that my parents will not do anything. Why? Because they tell me to suck it up, especially if it's the dad, or then ignore it. Do not tell them that. If they, you tell them that, they will stop trusting you, okay? Because, and by the way, if your child comes to you and tells you about bullying, they've already tried this, okay? Because naturally, if somebody stronger, bigger, okay, is going to pick on you, the first thing you're going to do is ignore them, right? That's the natural response, right? Okay, so they've already tried that. They've already, they've already tried ignoring it and sucking it up. Now it's getting too much, now they're coming to you. So don't give them this advice, something that they've already tried, okay? Number two, review the school or district policy. Why is it so important? You need to understand what is the anti-bullying policy of my school, okay? Inside out, why is that important? Parents, yes. You need to follow whatever the right procedure is to report or follow up that you don't want to Exactly. You need, to, you, need, you need to know the procedure. Why is that so important though? Why is knowing the procedure so important and doing everything right by the book according to their own rules? So when you meet with the people in authority, the teacher or the principal, you have an idea how to address it and how to follow up with them. And they will know that you already know the policy. Okay, okay. Okay, good, good. There's another reason. What she said is correct, but there's another reason. Let's say something happens. Do you want to say something? Yeah, I mean, if you follow the rules, they, they have no excuse to not take Exactly, that's what I was getting at, yeah. So what happens is, uh, let's say something happens to your kid at school, something severe, your kid becomes hospitalized, may, may Allah forbid, okay? Because of a bullying incident. Okay, now you go to the police, now you need to sue the school. The first thing the school is going to do is protect itself. It's going to ask you, did you follow our procedures that we have outlined in our school database, in our school rules? You're going to say, no, well, it's your fault then. You didn't follow any of the procedures, so it's not our fault that your kid got bullied. It's your fault. You didn't just follow any of the procedures. If you had, we would have taken proper actions. So the first thing the school is going to do is protect itself. That's why you need to know. You know the thing that your child brings home at the beginning of the year that you sign, you don't read, and you send it back? So usually in there, there's an anti-bullying policy. This is our anti-bullying policy. And when you sign it, you're agreeing to it, okay? So you've already signed it, okay, that I agree to this policy, okay? But you don't know it. So you have to know it inside out. Now, if you don't know it, you have to call the school. You have to call the school and tell them, hey, what is the anti-bullying policy at your school? I need to know. I want it in writing, okay? And also, if my kid is being bullied, what are the steps that they need to do? I need that whole outline. Give me that whole procedure from beginning to end. What, what channels do I need to take? Who do I need to talk to? What is the procedure? How to do it? I need to know everything. They need to have it printed out and memorize it. You should know it inside out, okay? And this is what the mother was saying earlier, number three, inform the school about your concerns right away. You need to let them know right away, don't wait, you need to know. If your child comes home and you, they tell you something that sounds clearly like bullying, you immediately tell the teacher, hey, my kid came home, this is what he said, I need this to be taken care of, okay? What are you doing about it to fix the situation? Uh, or even, even if you have to set up a meeting, do it, okay? Yes? Just to add to that, I think there were two different methods. What I'm sorry, excuse me, Cloud. Just to add to that last point, I think doing it in two different methods works better. In writing, sending an email to the principal and the teacher and copying it, and also follow up with a phone call meeting. Because if you just call the teacher, 
Not on the fact I'm like, okay, we'll take care of her, I'm sorry. But when we do it in writing, it takes much longer. Exactly, yes, I will get to that as well, but yes, he's right, we have to follow up, okay? So, you have to immediately tell the school and get it, uh, get it um, re recorded with them. And document everything. You need to have everything documented. Why? Because document is evidence, okay? It is evidence, okay? Uh, so, um, so, like, so first report it to the teacher and follow it up with an email, okay? And then, uh, and if you don't have, if you talk to them over the phone, you need to write down the name of who you talk to. What did you say? What did they say? What time it was? Okay, what happened? everything has to be documented, okay? Now, if the bullying does not stop or the authority does not do anything, we'll keep going up the chain, okay? And here's the chain. This is the chain you need to remember. This is, you can call it the golden chain, okay? This is the chain you need to understand, okay? When it comes to public schools. Number one, you go to the teacher. Most people just stop here. They never go further than this. Maybe here, but they don't go further than this. You have to keep going up the chain of command, okay? If you go to the teacher, you say, hey, my kid came home, what I said earlier, this did not bully, what are you going to do to fix it? You, you report it, you follow it up, they don't know what to do. Your kid comes home and tells you that he's still being picked on. You go to the principal, you say, hey, I talked to the teacher, she didn't know anything about it, okay? I need, I need you to protect my kid, he's being bullied, and I need, I need you to know what's going to happen, okay? Uh, a couple of weeks go by, the bullying is still continuing. You go up the chain, you go to the superintendent. By this time, they'll get their attention, okay? But the superintendent is all hard to find out who your superintendent is by going to your county's website, okay? And figure out who it is, contact him, email him, call him, set up a meeting if you have to, or email him and CC them too, okay? That will get their attention immediately, okay? Let's say, ironically, let's say, uh, most likely something will happen by this time, but take it seriously. Let's say it still doesn't happen. You can go to the school board. Your school board, you know, they meet every uh, they have a meeting periodically, okay? But even if they don't, you can email them. You can find out who the representative of your area for your school board is. Contact them, okay? Tell them, hey, I talked to the superintendent, I talked to the principal, I talked to the teacher. None of them have done anything to protect my kid, okay? What are you going to do about it, okay? So let's say uh, nothing happens even then. Then you can go all the way to the U.S. government, okay? You can write a complaint in the civil rights is U.S. Department of Justice Civil Rights Division. You can write a complaint, they will actually assign someone on your behalf for free to investigate the school, okay? So now they're really in trouble, right? So you can do all of this. Is, this is something that has in your power, okay, that you have to do. This is influence. This is how you go up the chain, okay? So you have to memorize this chain. So, so most people, like I said, they stop at the teacher or the principal. Again, and that's not okay, okay? Especially if they don't know anything about it, okay? So you have to keep going up the chain. Yes? Exactly, exactly. And that's why I said about the previous email. Even if you need to forward the previous emails that you had the conversation with, let them know. Let them review the whole thing, okay? Because there are federal laws and state laws in schools, okay? That that uh, that schools have to protect the, protect the kids from bullying, okay? So there are federal laws and there are state laws. You can go to the uh, you can go to stopbullying.gov and find out what the laws of your state is. From my understanding, New Jersey has very strict laws, okay? And, um, and I think Islamic schools have their own policies. You can review that with Islamic schools, what their policy is on this issue as well. What we need to understand is that doesn't happen in high school, uh, in, in um, public school, that happens in Islamic schools, and it happens in his schools as well, I've, I've heard of it, okay? And it happens in Sunday schools as well, uh, so it happens everywhere, okay? Okay, now, if your child is the bully, so this is an important slide, a lot of parents have, you know, trouble digesting that, but it could happen. If the right circumstances are in place, then it could happen. It could be your child as well. What to do with your child <laughs> is the bully. <clears throat> Number one, make it clear that their behavior is unacceptable. It will have consequences, okay? So a lot of times I hear parents say, uh, when their kids do something bad, oh, you know, when I get home, I'll, I'll show him, you know, what happens, you know, who's the boss, or whatever, you know? Or when they go, nothing happens, okay? It's something that they say is to please the community, okay? Or the other person, or the other parent, okay? You know, inshallah, when I get home, I'll straighten him out, I'll I'll talk to him, but they don't, okay? So what happens, what you're, what you're teaching your child is that it's okay, that it's not, it's, it's not serious. So you have to tell your kid, hey, you, if they come home with a complaint of, that they were bullied, you have to tell them immediately, hey, I don't want to hear about this again, this has to stop immediately, otherwise there will be consequences. But whatever punishment you have in store for them, you have to follow through with it. Yes? So, about this is, let's say we get a complaint, your child says, this is not happening or it's not, what do you recommend? You said you should tell them it's unacceptable. Maybe it's not, you know, how, how do you address that? 
Yeah, so, so, so he's saying, if there's a doubt, because the, the obvious is your kid is going to, you know, uh, your kid is going to uh, deny it, right? But I didn't do it, that's not true. But then, it's, as a parent, it's your job to investigate. Okay, find, find out. Talk, I mean, if, it, if my kid did it, I would call the parents of the other kid. I would have a conversation with that kid. I want to talk to your kid. If my, if my kid is really a bully, bully your kid, let me talk to your kid one-on-one. -on -one. Or just with you around, I want to talk to him. If this actually happened, I will deal with it. So as a parent, you have to take that responsibility, okay? And you have to investigate, figure out if there's any merit behind it or not. But that's, that's all you. So we're assuming by this that it was merit, and there was some you know, evidence or whatever, or there were witnesses, and the school said, that if, because you think if the school has investigated and they have said, yes, your kid is a bully, then you need to take that seriously, okay? Okay, follow through with the consequences. You have to teach your kid. Okay, if you don't follow through with the consequences, you're teaching them that, that basically your threats or your consequences, there are no consequences for their actions. So if you don't follow through with the consequences, you're basically putting them up, you're, throwing, you're basically putting them up with a life of failure, basically. Because they're always going to think they can get away with anything. Okay, so whatever you do, you have to have consequences, and if they do something bad, you have to follow through with the consequences. Okay, that's, that's, that's something that parents, out of their love and affection for the child, they don't do. Okay, they, they, they'll say, if you don't do this, we're going to do this. When they actually do it, they don't follow through. Why? Because of love and affection. And that harms the child, okay, in the long run. And that's not good. Help them recognize how it is making the victim feel. This is where empathy comes in. Somebody mentioned that earlier. You have to make the child understand the pain of the victim. Do you know how that, that you know, how do, do you understand how it, that made, how that, your actions made that child feel? Okay, do you know how hurt he or she was? What if he's, what if somebody did that to your brother or sister? Would you like it? No. Well, he also, he is also a brother or sister of someone else. What if somebody did that to you? Would you like it? No. Well, why, you're, why are you doing it to him? Okay, so you have to make them feel empathy for the victim. Encourage them to perform an act of kindness. Take them to a soup kitchen. Have them volunteer at the masjid, okay? Whatever it may be. But you have to basically make them, uh, you know, when, whenever a kid has a power over someone, okay, they get some sort of a high out of it, right? Okay, they get some sort of, they get some sort of satisfaction out of it, right? So you want to change that, that they can also do something positive in somebody's life and have the same kind of power over someone, but in a positive way. You want to change that energy that they're feeling of having that influence on someone's life. Ask them to reflect on why they are doing it. Okay, so that means sit down with your kid, you need to have a talk. What made you want to call that kid that word? Okay? What why did you hit that kid? What happened? You need to get to the bottom of it. What's the what's the root cause? What is causing him to be, or her to behave that way? Why did you tweet that thing at her or whatever, right? But maybe that's when the skeletons will come out of the closet. Oh mom, dad, my or, uh, you know, um, my older brother or sister do it to me. You don't say anything to them. So why should I, why should I care? Why do you care if I do it to somebody else? You don't stop them, okay? Or, you know, I see Baba do it to other people all the time. You don't say anything to him, okay? So why do I have to care? Well, why do I have to care if, if, if I do it to other kids? You know, so I mean, you have to get to the bottom of it. What is the psychology? What is causing him or her to behave that way, okay? Or maybe it could be friends, right? It could also be, hey, oh, mom, I didn't want to do it, my friends made me do it. Now you know your kid is hanging out, hanging around with the wrong crowd. So now you need to tell them, okay, no more, you cannot be friends with them, okay? Or whatever you need to do to cut off that connection. Okay, some kids, they have anger issues. They have anger problems, okay? And as parents, you should be able to figure out if my kid has anger problems or not. In that case, they need therapy or they need counseling, okay? And in our community, unfortunately, there is a stigma against mental health, okay? So it's, there's nothing wrong with it. I always tell parents, if your child was physically sick, you would take them to a doctor, right? Yes? Something, something if your child is physically sick and you do not have the qualifications to basically heal that physical inability or whatever, that problem, you're going to take them to a doctor, right? In the same way, if your child has mental health problems, okay, or they have attitude problems, they have anger problems, okay, you have to take them to a professional, okay, you have to take them to a professional, okay, so there's nothing wrong with that, okay, there's something that you, we should seek out, okay, so if your child has anger issues, you need to get them help. Some kids have communication issues, they never learn how to, how to communicate with other people. As children, you know, you know that age when kids are like first snatching at each other and taking things from each other. Mine, mine, mine. And that's the age you need to teach your kids that how to share, how to compromise, how to get along with other people, right? Because that's how this life goes by, right? We compromise. We don't all be as adults. We don't agree with each other, right? 
So we, we always compromise. Okay, I don't like it that way, but you know what? For the betterment of the whole thing, I'm just going to let it go and not really care that much. Or I'm going to negotiate until this point and not be on this point. So we negotiate, we compromise. That's how we adults, that's how the world goes round and round. Otherwise, we'll be just killing each other, right? So some parents, they never teach their children as young, when they don't have to communicate with the other person. How do I talk? How do I share? How do I reach a compromise? I'm not always going to get what I want. Okay? So if you don't teach them that, then they won't learn. And when they go to school, they do the same thing. Because they never learn to share or communicate or compromise. And when you're around other human beings, you have to compromise. Okay? Now, if your kid has low self-confidence, then help them feel better. So, so remember I said that so there are two types of victims of low self-confidence. There are those because of low self-confidence, they become victims of bullying. And there are those, because of low self-confidence, they become bullies. That is the only way they feel confident. When they pick on other kids, when they harass other kids, it makes them feel strong and proud. Okay? And because of that, that means they have low self-confidence issues. If that's your child, you have to find things. And I have, I have a separate slide on that. But you have to basically increase self-confidence in your children. Know their friend. Yes, it is the job of you as a parent. It's one of your main jobs to know who your kids are hanging out with. You have to know. Okay, if they're in the wrong circle, in the wrong crowd, you have to put a stop to it. Okay, because especially if it's having impact on their behavior. Okay, so these are the general tips for parents related to bullying. Lead by example. You as parents are your kids' first school. Okay, that's where. That's where they get their primary education about how to deal with other human beings from you. So you have to lead by example. You have to treat each other fairly as parents, a husband and wife. You have to teach. You have to treat each other respectfully, okay, and uh, and politely, and you have to treat other people the same way. Teach them positive, non-violent responses to abusive behavior. Don't tell them to fight this and that. No, you have to teach them positive. If somebody says something to you, this is how you respond in a positive manner, okay. So you have to teach them uh, non-violent responses. Building them self, strong self-confidence and positive self-image. Two things about this. Number one, you get to enroll them in a self-defense class. It helps with uh, self-confidence a lot, okay? Um, and I have a separate slide for that, so I'll get to that in general. Create a loving home environment. Uh, create a loving home and environment. So every child wants safety. And love. That's those are two of the main things that kids want. You have to give that to your children, okay? Because if you don't, they will try to get it from somewhere else. So either they'll become bullies or they'll become victims of bullying. So you have to give them a loving home and environment. And I have some examples here. Uh, treat them with respect, no physical or emotional abuse, active listening. Active listening means, by the way, any parent tell me, what is active listening? I don't think a lot of parents understand what active listening means. What is active listening? Yes. When they talk, you give them the time and you listen. Yeah, you actually take the tea, it's not like, yeah, yeah, whatever, okay, uh-huh, uh-huh, no. You actually sit down, make eye contact, and actually listen. What is my child saying to me, okay? You make that, you make that connection, okay? You have to make that connection with your child. You will not allow mistreatment, meaning you should not allow one kid in your house to bully the other kid. The older kid is bullying the little kids, absolutely not. Okay, you should not allow any type of bullying behavior or aggressive behavior in your house. Allow expression of opinion, allow them to express their opinion, it's okay. You should, have a, you should have healthy debates with your children. They're going to have their own opinions. They're not going to copycat you and everything, right? They have their own personality, their own ideas, their own experiences, and their own background. But because of that, it can differ with your, uh, with your opinion a lot. So if it's a healthy debate, you need to encourage that. And it's okay. You should allow expression of opinion. So even if it's something like really serious, you should talk to a lot of them about it and make them understand in a loving manner, not like trying to force it upon them. This is haram and that's it. Okay, so they're going to have that question, especially in this society, right? They're going to have those questions. Why can't I have a girlfriend? Why can't I have this? Why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? Right? So, you need to talk to them in a way that they understand, lightly, positively, and not forcing things on them. Okay, create a culture of accountability. Okay, meaning, if your kid do something wrong, you have to punish them. What I, what I said earlier, you have to have, there has to be a culture of accountability that your kids should understand. We have rules in the house, and if we don't follow those rules, we get in trouble. They have to understand that. Recognize and look for signs which may indicate that your child is being bullied. So I, I mentioned some of them earlier, right? Like your kids' uh, eating patterns change, their sleeping patterns change, their academic performance drops. Okay, they want to be on the school soccer team, now they're hated. All of a sudden, their, their attitude, their behavior has changed. Okay, so these are, these are signs that you can look for. By the way, you go to Google and you can Google so many other things, like signs my kid is being bullied. There are like hundreds of things out there. Okay. 
Get to know the staff of the school. We must get involved in the school, okay? Get involved in the PTA, okay, if your in the elementary, in the public school. You should be part of it. Be that one brown person who's running for president, okay? Uh, in our community, actually, there's a Muslim brother. He actually became the president. They chose him to be the president of the PTA. He's literally the president. He knows everybody at the school. He knows the superintendent. And they're like literally on his phone dial. If anything, so if you're a PTA, you know what's going to what happened. If you become if you go if you become part of the PTA, you know everything that is going on in the school. What's happening? How many bullying incidents are happening? What's the latest scandal at the school? Okay, like you know every single thing that's happening in your school, and everybody knows you. All the teachers know you. The principal knows you. Everybody respects you because you're the president. Okay. Yeah. Just said. Um, Teach self-protection techniques and role play. So in your house, you should have role play with your kids, okay? Take your kid, make one of your kids the bully, and the other one the victim, and tell them, okay, play it out. I want you to do a like, little test case, okay? You know, we need to play it out. Because why, if it happens in real life, we know what to do, okay? So that's why, so you need to role play. Okay, so this is the last slide I have, which is how to raise self-confidence kids, okay? So number one, Help them develop competence. What is competence? What is competence? Are you pointing at it? Competence. We talk about this all the time. So it's the ability to do things, right? Exactly, it's ability. It's being good at something. Two, two things. Being good at something, okay? And also being having having independence, being having ability to do something, okay? Uh, you are good at something and you're able to do it on your own without you know, somebody always you know, uh, uh, babysitting you, okay? You're able to do it on your own, okay? So you have to help your kids build self-confidence by making them competent. They should be able to do things on their own, okay? They should not always rely on you. You have to teach your children to become independent, okay? Let them take healthy risks. It means two things. Uh, let them make their own age-appropriate choices, okay? A lot of times what happens is they're too protective over their kid. They don't let them do anything, okay? They don't let them do anything. And what happens when you don't let them do anything? They will never learn to take risks. Let me give you, a, let me give you an example, okay? When your child is being bullied, when your child is being bullied at school, and when they speak against that bully, speak up or stand up that against that bully, is he or she taking a risk? Yes or no? It's a risk in his mind or in her mind. It's a risk, okay? Because in their mind, this is like a super villain, right? So if you've never taught your children how to take risks, what do you think they're going to make? Why would they take a risk now? If you've always taught your children to be always safe, okay, and always be protected, then why would they, that's what they're going to do too? When the bully punch, when the bully's punching them, harassing them, they're going to stay quiet. They're going to take that abuse. Why? That's safe. If you tell your parents, I'm going to hurt you more. Okay, just keep hurting me, and I'll just be here. Okay. But why they've never learned how to take risks. You have to let your kids take healthy risks. Okay? <clears throat> Make them feel loved and secure. Every child wants love and security. If they don't get it at home, they get it from someone else, and it helps build their self-confidence. They need to feel loved, that my parents love me, and they, that, that what, no matter what happens, I can always come home and be safe. They need to understand that. Do not overpraise. Okay, some parents overpraise their kids, and this is two things. Okay, number one. Offer appropriate pay. It should be specific and should be earned. Okay? All specific and earned. Meaning, the kid comes home, they get an A on the test, right? Hey, great job. You worked really hard. You totally earned it. Thank you. It's very specific and it's earned. Okay? It's very specific and it is earned. And the second thing about praising is focus should be on the effort and not the qualities of the results. Why? Why should the focus of the praise should always be the effort? This is a very important life lesson, by the way. Why should the... yes? That's something that you could fully, fully not, not the results, not... Possible. Good, good, that's one. Do you have something to do? No, I mean, basically, if you uh, compliment the qualities of the individual, they actually feel uh, incompetent. They would actually be like a self-destructive kind of situation. Yes, yes, absolutely. You're both right. So the main, the main idea of this is that <laughs> when they go through in life, what the brothers, what the first brother said earlier is that uh, the effort is what they can control, right? Who controls the results? As Muslims, who do we think controls the results? Allah, right? They're not going to always pass, right? So if you're always praising the result, they get an A. Hey, hey, good job. They get a D. Oh, what's wrong with you? Are you not dumb or something? 
Okay? So if you are constantly giving praises to this, then what happens is when this fail in life, okay, or when they get another F, their self-confidence goes down. Okay? Their self-confidence goes, oh my parents are gonna hate me. I have to hide this from you. But if you always emphasize the effort, you know what happens? They think, you know what? I failed this time, it's okay, you know what? I'll try harder next time. That's the self-confident kid. A low self-confident kid is, oh, my parents are going to kill me. Oh my god, I, I, I failed. What's going to happen? They're gonna, all they're going to do is look at my grade, even though they may have worked their butt off, right? So if you know your child worked their butt off, right, and they still fail, you still have to praise the effort. Like, you know, you tried your best, it's okay, try again. Because that's how they're going to get through life. In, in life, are they going to fail? Yes, they're going to fail a lot. It's going to happen a lot in life, okay? They need to learn that it's the effort that counts, it's not the results. The results is not in their hands, okay? Why? Effort, it, it, so it is directly related to self-confidence. So, so kids who are self-confident, they focus on the effort. And why? Because their parents have taught them to think that way, okay? Let them help around the house. It helps with self-confidence, you know? Uh, let them clean the gift. You have to give them duties, okay? You have to. Your kids should be taking out the trash, okay? They should be helping you with cooking. They should be helping you uh, clean the house, okay? They should be, like, as soon as, as, soon as they're able, like, at an early age, start at, start it with them. Why? Because it helps them build competence, okay? And as well as self-confidence. They need to be able to do things, okay? If, some of you may have, you know, young kids. You know when, you're, when your kids are really young? When they do something for the first time, they're so proud of themselves, right? Like, I did it, I did it, you know, they're so proud. Like, it could be like, they may have made a more mess, but they tried, right? And then they tried to, like, pick up their... For example, uh, I have a two-year-old, right? So whenever she, like, cleans something up, like the vacuum, she gets, like, so happy and excited. And she's, like, so proud of herself, like, I cleaned, I helped, I helped, I helped Baba clean the house, you know? Even though she did, like, nothing. <laughs> but she tried, right? She tries. So it's, even if it's, like, one tissue paper, she, Picks up and puts it in the trash, she loves it. It gives it gives boost to her self confidence. Okay? That's what it's more. So help make them help around the house. And by the way, I have, to, I have to say this here, I'm sorry, but it should be for both boys and girls. And fortunately, did you know there's a reason why girls in our community are far more self confident than boys, right? And the main reason is because we give them responsibilities in the house, right? Cooking, cleaning, this and that. And the kids, their only job is to come home with homework and play video games, right? And then we wonder why they're still little boys even when they're like 20s, right? It's because we keep them that way. So we have to, whether it's boys or girls, doesn't matter, we have to give them work around the house. Taking out the trash, cleaning the house, cleaning the bathroom, helping with cooking, whatever it is, it helps with self-confidence self -confident and competence. Okay. Encourage them to pursue their interests, okay? So, every child is different, okay? Some parents, they want to make a copycat out of all the kids, right? So one kid is really good at math, they want to do the same thing across the board, right? You can't do that. Every kid is different, okay? So maybe your, your one kid is very artistic, your one kid is very sporty, okay? One kid is very uh, sciencey or mathy, right? Whatever it is, you as parents have to figure out what is my kid's talent? What is that hit? Every child has some sort of a hidden talent, okay? You need to discover what that is and, try, and stop trying to implant talents into them that is not their talent, right? That's something that you want to do. But figure out what is now what, what are the what is my kid naturally good at? What is he naturally good at? What is she naturally good at? And once you find it, you need to cultivate it. You need to grow it. Okay? So maybe your kid is very good at sport. Maybe he or she is very good at soccer. Get them in the soccer team. Okay? Put them in the soccer team, right? Or he or she is really good at math. Get them in the math club. Okay? Okay, maybe he's very much into um, I don't know, martial arts. Get him into martial arts class. Whatever it is, just find whatever it is. Maybe your kid is very artistic. Get them into some sort of artistic class or something like that. Just to basically you want to grow their talent, okay? Whatever the natural talent was, it will build competence, independence, and as well as self-confidence, okay? If they fail or struggle, make clear you love them regardless. So your child, this is, this is, this is connected with this one, okay? Which is uh, focusing on the effort, which is they are going to fail, okay? They need to be able to understand. If I fail, I can always come back to my parents and they will make me feel good, okay? They will, they will accept me, okay? Uh, so make clear to them that you love them regardless. So even if they don't get into the university that they wanted to, okay? Or maybe they failed the final exam in their lot in the last year of senior, senior, senior year of the paper. So as long as they try their best, as long as they put in the proper effort and they still fail, they should, should always tell them, make sure you should, they should understand that, they, that you love them regardless of what happened to them, okay? Ban harsh criticism. 
Okay, so this is really sort of, yes, some parents actually do this to their kids, okay? They tell them things like, I wish you were dead, it was an accident, you know, we, didn't, we don't even want you, you know? These are horrible things to say to your kids. Why would you emotionally scar them like that? That, help, that kills their self-confidence, hearing that type of stuff from the parents. I know some parents say, I don't, brother, I don't mean it, I just say it out of anger, I love my kids, I will give my life for them. Okay, but your kids, would you say that to them in the spit of rage? Okay, what happens is you're killing their self-confidence. You're at home, Telling them, I wish you were never born, I wish this, you're ugly, you're fat, who's going to marry you, and blah, blah, this and that, you're too dark, you're too this, you're too... When they go to school, they hear those same things from the bully. What do you think is going to happen? They heard it from their parents, and now they're hearing it from the bully. What's going to happen? They're going to build a connection. Fight. Huh? They're going to fight. No, they're not going to fight, they're going to think it's true. I am, yeah, they're going to think, I am too fat, I am too ugly, my parents were right, I should have been born, maybe I should go kill myself. Okay? You know, you know, you know, parents get mad at the kids to say, well, you know, I wish you were dead, okay? And now they're at the school, the Buddha says, oh, why don't you go tell yourself, man? You're ugly. He said, you know what? Maybe he's right. My parents said the same thing. He's saying the same thing. They're right. I should go tell them myself. I'm going to go tell them myself. You see, you understand? So see, it's a little bit, so you should never, harsh, you should never use harsh criticism against your kids. That's a horrible thing to do. Horrible. By the way, I had a sister tell me that, uh, um, I didn't know that before she told me. She said that a lot of women, uh, a lot of women, they feel that the, one of the main reasons they have low self-confidence is because of their mother. Okay? Why? Because this, their mothers have always uh, criticized them. You're too fat. You're too up. Who's going to marry? Blah, 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 this and that. They say horrible things to their daughters, right? And because of that, the girl's self-confidence is so low, super low. Okay? And that's a horrible thing. And we need to eradicate that. Those are the Muslim girl, by the way, who told me that happens in Muslim communities. She was talking particularly about the Pakistan Indian community, but I'm assuming this is across the board. Okay, let them help others and give. So I said that earlier as well. So you want to give positive energy to your kids, right? So have them, so like I said, naturally, whenever we do something good, when we, when we uh, basically uh, feed a homeless person or somebody who's suffering, we help them out, okay? It makes us feel good about ourselves, right? So that's a feeling you want to cultivate with your children. So take them to soup kitchens. How to make them help around the house. I mean, um, help around the masjid. Help the poor and the needy. Or whatever. And they have to have that feeling inside that, you know, I'm having a positive impact on someone. Why? Because it will help their self-confidence. So these are some of the things that I collected from the, uh, from the research. But there are so many other things that are out there that can, you can use to help raise self-confidence kids. So remember, self-confidence kids are less likely to be bullied and less likely to be Bullies, okay? So this is something one of the best things you can do to uh, save your kids from being bullied. So I have a slide after this. So I have some other resources here. So um, this is our official website about this project, ignacsj.org slash stopbullying. And you can download all the slides that you see here. You can download them for free. I have them here. Uh, you can go to the website, ignacsj.org slash anti-bullying workshop, and you can download them. Uh, this is an app that you can download for iPhone as well as Android. It's called the No Bullying App. It was released by the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services. It talks to you about bullying, what it is, how to get rid of it, uh, not rid of it, but um, what is bullying, everything basically what I just talked about, plus more stuff. How to talk to your kids about bullying, how to recognize signs for bullying, things like that. It's a very useful app you can download. Uh, Stopbullying.gov, um, that's the official government's website. That's where you can go to find out information about what are the bullying, anti-bullying laws in your state, okay? Uh, ing.org, they have some resources, that's the Muslim organization. Nobullying.com and stopoutbullying.org. So these are all basically stuff that I have, that we have on the website. Uh, I think they recorded this, right? Are you going to put it on the website? Chum. Okay. But if not, we have it on our website as well. I have a similar recording that I did in Texas. So you can watch this. So if you have some parents that you think might benefit from this training, we have the whole training on the website as well that you can look at in Chum. Any questions? Well, if you don't ask questions, we'll do quizzes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jazakallah coming. Yeah. So, um, if a child in school is Uh, so, uh, 
this is, sounds very similar to me, but I had a case in um, Florida. So one um, sister came, I mean, she called me, actually. She said her, kids, her kid was being um, bullied in class, and, um, and the teacher wasn't taking it seriously. And she wasn't going up the chain, like I said earlier. You have to make, you have to make, you have to go up the chain, right? But as a parent, your first step should be, you have, you have if you, even if it means you have to march to the school and make a meeting with the parents of the kid who's, who's the bully, you should do so. I have, I have a friend in Virginia. He said my kids were being bullied in school, and I called the teacher, nobody did anything. So he set up a meeting with the principal and the kid and his parents. Okay, so that everybody was in the room. He said, Look, I need this to stop. Okay, my kid is coming home. This is what's happening. I need this to stop. Okay, and they immediately took it seriously. He said that, that kid never bothered his kids again. Okay, uh, so you have to, you have to keep going. With it. Either you have to keep going up the chain, or you have to basically take initiatives in the school. You have to make, you have to set up the meeting, even if it means meeting with the kid's parents who is, who is being the bully. Okay, and so it has to be beyond that, not just like taking information. I didn't hear the second part of your question. If you can talk to me after, I'll talk to you. Yeah. One of the practical ways to do it is actually, you know, you tell the teacher, you tell the principal, but if you start having play dates and involve that bully and the kid who's being bullied, you know, together in a fun thing, you realize that both the kids are, you know, have low self-esteem or whatever problems they're having. In that play date situation, things improve. And I think that's a one practical way to do it. Uh, because if you keep on going up, you know, you're not trying to expel that, you know, we've already talked about that the bully uh, yes, has yeah. problems, right? And even if you use therapy for him, if therapy doesn't work immediately, it takes time. Yes, yes. And during that time, your child needs to survive in that environment. Yes. So one of the practical ways to do it is to have play dates, and it makes a huge, huge impact on both kids. And they realize that, you know, the bully wasn't a, it's just a normal kid. And the kid who's being bullied, He's actually a fun person, and that helps a lot. Yes. Yeah. The, uh, so you know, I'm basically saying under a supervised play date, it might help them become friends and maybe you know learn from each other. Uh, I think that's a good point. I think that would work. Yes. So let's present that if my kid is getting bullied and she comes to me, but the other thing is she doesn't want me to tell the teacher or anybody. So how am I convince her that this is the best way? You use your daughter. Let's say, for example, okay. Okay. So yeah, as you know, that happens a lot. Okay, what happens is the kids say that they tell the parent they want that they're being bullied, but they don't want the parents to do anything about it. Okay, yes. so that is that that because the child is scared. Because why? Because they think that you will not be able to take the proper steps needed to stop the bullying. That's what that's what he's or she's fearing. That that okay, I told her, but if she goes to school, I'm gonna get in trouble with my friends. Okay, so that's something you have to talk. You basically would have to talk to your child, you have to make them realize that look, it's not gonna stop unless you put a stop to it. Okay? And at the, at the end you at the end of the day, what your child is saying that they don't trust that you're gonna be able to protect them. So you have to be able to understand, hey, listen to me. I'm gonna try to put a stop to it, even if it means I have to take you out of school. Okay, if you have to take you out of the school, I will do so. I will protect you at the end of the day, don't worry about it. They need to feel that security that if it gets really bad, my parents will take me out of the school. I'll give you one story, okay? Uh, but this, but this uh, lady from uh, the sister from Florida. So her kid was being bullied in school, and she said it, was, it had gotten so bad that whenever she would stop by the school, her kid would start shaking. Like she would literally start shivering and shaking because of the fear of being bullied inside. And she complained to the teacher. You know what the teacher said? The teacher said to her that look, we have if we, if we can only do something about it, we basically catch him in the act. Otherwise, we can't do anything about it. That's a horrible thing to say to, to a kid. He basically saying, I have no defense. The kid, he, because the, all the other witnesses are not coming forward, because they're all scared of the bullies, right? So nobody's coming forward. So this kid is like shaking and shivering, and she's still putting him into the school. So I, I, I was really angry with her. I was like, do you not care about your child? Do you understand your child is going through a trauma, and he's physically telling you that he's not safe in this environment. It's not good for his mental health. And you keep throwing him in there. Like, oh, go ahead. It's okay. It's okay. Go ahead. I said, did you talk to the teacher? Yes. Did you talk to the principal? No. Why? I don't know, brother. I just didn't think. I did not tell you in the she attended my workshop, but she didn't follow through with the steps. Okay, I said, did I not tell you to go off the chain? Yeah, my husband said we should go to the principal, but I wasn't sure. I'm like, look at your child. He's shivering and shaking. And you're still like wondering, should I talk to the principal or not? Okay, yes, talk to the principal. So the point I'm trying to make is, 
that yes, your children will say that because they don't feel you will protect them, okay? So you have to make them realize, look, they need to understand that yes, we have to stay. The only way this will stop is my parents get involved, if adults get involved, and they put an end. Don't make a service at your school, make a separate meeting with a teacher. Don't tell them you're going to come to school and tell the whole friend. You're going to have a separate meeting with the kid and his parents, maybe, okay? And maybe the teacher and the principal, okay? And they're going to all say, and maybe the, even the witnesses that he knows, that so and so saw me, you know, get bullied. So they can isolate them and ask them what happened and things like that. But they need to understand at the end of the day that at the end of the day my parents will protect me. If things get bad, if the bullies start coming after me because I got my mom in law, my mom is willing to take me out of school. Okay, if I have to, because why? Your child's security and protection is your number one priority. Even if it means you know, taking them out of school. Then that's what you have to do. I just want to add to that shaking part of it. Um, I, I'm a doctor and I see a lot of kids coming in with bullying. And with what? With abdominal pain, okay. with belly pain. They're perfectly normal kids. They only have belly pain. And they have been to their pediatrician a bunch of times. Labs were normal. CT scan has been done. Everything's normal. And they come to me. I'm a, I'm a specialist. I'm a GI specialist. And they come to me and we're sitting at the table. And I'm looking at them. And I just ask them, how's school going? And then you can see it on their face. School is not going. And that's the first time the parent is hearing this. And when I sit there and I'm like, okay, tell me about school, tell me about bullying, has anybody done it? And that's the first time they actually open up and they say, yes, things are not going good at school. And the parents have their jaws on the floor. Like, these kids have been, you know, different medications, different imaging, all the things have been done and nobody actually asks them if things are going good at school. And one thing also that comes up at that table that I wanted, because parents are here, um, straight A students, honor students, also have a lot of stress, and that stress manifests as belly pain. So parents should need to know that, you know, these belly pain kids who are coming in and who look normal, everything's normal, there's some stress going on, so ask them, what's going on in school? Yeah. So the key thing is having a conversation with your child, yeah. he's looking at the clock, so I think it's a good uh, I used to be a substitute teacher. Uh, when you call the office of the school, and they take a message, don't leave details of your message. But sometimes you don't know whom you're talking to. Sometimes that person in the office is a friend of the teacher, or she knows the family, or she knows something, or for whatever reason, she doesn't want to give the message to the principal. If you want, you have to go through the <coughs> leave details of your message to the person answer the phone in the office. It comes to you have to speak to the principal, you have to take an appointment and speak to the principal himself or herself. Because you don't know that people in the office, what they go through or what they do, or they are friend of a friend of a friend that they don't want your message to go through. Because I've seen that by my eyes in the office as a substitute teacher. Okay, I, I think that's very helpful. Uh, I'll end with this story. Uh, by the way, this is my favorite part. I learn a lot of new things and perspectives and people's different experiences, and I incorporate them in future workshops. Okay, so this is good. So, this is awesome. I'll end with this, okay? So, in one of my, when I was in one of my classes by Texas, and um, I had a sister, she said that uh, her six year old came home and she said that uh, one of the kids at the, in the school said that um, you cannot come to my party because you believe in a different God than me, okay? This is an act of, you know, harassment, obviously, right? So she said, I complained to the teacher, and the teacher said, oh, all kids are like this, you know, they're at this age, but that's not acceptable behavior, right? So, uh, because, by the way, we need to understand, a lot of teachers are desensitized to bullying. Okay, not all of them, but many are. Why? Because they view it so many times that they become desensitized. They just think it's everyday behavior, okay? Because they've become so used to it, especially if they've been teaching for many years, okay? So it's always normal as a human being, we adapt to things, right? So it's normal for, for some teachers to basically become adaptive and basically and not take it seriously, and that's a problem. So anyway, so this, she, she said that, um, I said, no, that's definitely serious, you need to take it to the principal. And there was another sister sitting right next to her, she said that, look, she, she turned to her and she said, sister, I had a similar experience when, I was, when my kids were in kindergarten, and I marched right to the school. I said, you make the stop now, okay? Otherwise, you know, I'll go off the chain, okay? She threatened them, like, I'll go off the chain, I'll take a seat. My kids came home, he's being bullied, she's being bullied, you put a stop to it. Don't tell me that, oh, you know, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, we're looking to it, it's not okay, it's not, everybody's like this. No, it's not acceptable behavior, okay? So, meaning, so, you have to be respectful, but you need to be assertive. 
they need to understand that you're going to take it seriously, okay? And, if you, and if, that's why it's important to get educated on this stuff, to know what your limits are, okay? What the teacher's limits are and what, what is your limits are, okay? They should not feel that this is an ignorant parent. I can play with them however I want. Oh yeah, we're doing something about it. We're doing something about it. What is that? Nothing, okay? So you need to have that knowledge to be able to say, hey, no, I know how to go off the chain, okay? So I need to stop right now, okay? I don't want to hear my kid come home to me again and say that being a bully or things like that. So you have to be respectful, but you need to be assertive, okay? They should know that you're serious, okay? And you will go up the chain. But how many of you guys see the gold world? Do not show the gold world? I don't know if you see. So there's an episode on there about, <laughs> maybe you kids know what. There's an episode about this one, one, one lady who's, uh, so the mother of this show, She's like very, very hands-on PTA. She knows like everybody at the school. So whenever her kids get like in some sort of trouble uh, from other kids, and she goes off the chain. And she threatens them with the chain. So they, they make fun of it, but meaning the point is that it's a well understood concept. You have to go up the chain, okay? And anyway, Khan, inshallah, thank you for it. If you have any other questions, you can come to me. Do you have a question or a problem? Last question. Yeah. My son got bullied by a teacher. She got bullied by a teacher? Okay. By a teacher. Okay. So in that sense, like how how do you go up the chain? Because the principal did not take seriously, the superintendent did not take it seriously, because it's a teacher. You know? So how do you, how does the person help in that? Case? Was it based on religious? Uh, reason? Okay, then uh, I just get care involved. Care will put them straight up. Okay. If something that, by the way, if your kids are being harassed by a teacher because of religious reason, get care involved immediately. Okay, they'll sue the school, whatever they need to do. Okay, but they'll go after the school. The school and they'll get into the media because they have a lot of friends in the media. <coughs> so they'll immediately go to the media and get the attention of the school, and the school will start taking it seriously. Okay. Okay, Zatullah Khair, thank you for coming, inshallah, and I hope uh, you learned a lot. <laughs>